Praise the Lord. Well, hello, brothers and sisters. I'm back on again. And um, I just wanted to continue from my last video um, because it cut out. In this video, I'm just going to be sharing um, a few beautiful testimonies and, um, and sharing a beautiful scripture with you to encourage you. Um, I plead the precious blood of Jesus over this video, over this message. I cover this message in the blood of Jesus. I just rebuke the works of the enemy in Jesus' name. I cancel the plan of the wicked one in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devourer and I destroy the destroyer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so now, brothers and sisters, so today is the 12th of November, 2019, Tuesday. And, um, and so in my last video, towards the end, when it cut off, I was about to tell you of a, an incident that happened and share some testimonies with you. So I just want to share how amazing the Lord is. Um, he's so beautiful in how he encourages us. As I was um, in th at the shopping center a few days ago last week, and um, and I, I, I remember I was just pondering, um, you know, I had been through a few things and, um, you know, a few spiritual attacks from the enemy. And, and, um, and I just remember just, you know, um, just pondering, um, like the Lord ministered to me and, um, he's just so amazing. He ministered to me and he told me to, um, to just sit down, go grab a hot drink and just, um, take time out, you know? Um, and, um, and so I did, you know, I went and I just sat on the street, I sat at a cafe and I, I had a, a hot drink, and um, while I was sitting there, <clears throat> yeah, my mind just drifted to the Lord and how amazing He is, and I was beginning to think about the things that are happening in the world and and just everything, and I and I was pondering on His coming, and and I guess in my spirit I was talking to the Lord and I was just saying, Lord, how long, how long, you know, how much longer, Lord? Like, um, when are you coming, Lord? You know, like. How much longer are we going to wait for you, Lord? And I was having that um, thought in my spirit. Anyway, brothers and sisters, he's so precious. As I had finished at the cafe, I stood up um, to walk, um, you know, to to walk and to and to go do what I needed to do. And um, and then the Lord directed me to go into this store. Um, so it's a second hand. It's a salvation store. Okay, you know, um. um yeah, it's a it's a salvation store. So it was like a second hand um, clothes store, but they sell everything, books and all that as well. Um, now I never go in that store, okay? But um, and you know, um, I don't mind buying second hand things. I don't think there's anything wrong with second hand things. There's like a lot of bargains, you know. But I just I just don't go because there's so many other stores, um, you know. But I just I don't particularly go into that store for any reason. So I'm just trying to portray to you that this was just the Lord leading me to go in. Because I walked into the store, literally led, guided there by the Holy Spirit. And he literally leads me all the way up to the back of the store to a bookshelf. And lo and behold, I find myself standing directly in front of this book. And it was just the Lord, just so beautiful, the Lord answering me. And um, this was the book, brothers and sisters, by Sherry Rose Shepherd, My Prince Will Come. And I was, I was just focusing on the coming of the Lord and, um, and, you know, and speaking to the Lord in my heart, saying, Lord, when, when, you know, when are you coming, Lord? And the book is titled, My Prince Will Come. I only paid $2 for this book and it's literally brand new. And, um... You know, they have so many different books like this in the Christian bookstores. You can pay up to $20 for a book like this. But it was so beautiful how the Lord ministered to me on that day. Okay. Tells me to go into the store. Leads me to buy this book. And um, and this book is just so beautiful. I'll just explain to you what it's about. It says, what a day it will be. It's the moment you've waited for all your life. Hopes and dreams long buried suddenly come alive. Heartache and pain melt away. Your eyes meet and you are overcome with joy. It's a love story beyond the most, beyond the most amazing fairy tale. A true happily ever after. All for you. 
Your eternal reign will begin on that day because your prince loves you and paid the ultimate price to call you his princess. Come now and get to know your prince. Understand your royal calling. Live with passion and peace. And prepare for that glorious day when you will finally meet Jesus, your prince, face to face. And um, I'll just give you an example inside of the book. I'll just re read a small amount for you. Instead of, it's just, uh, I was so blessed. And, you know, the Lord is, he's, we're serving the God of surprises. He surprises you. He blesses you. And he surprised me that day with the way he led me and guided me. And, and, um, and he purposely had this book there for me and literally led me to the bookshelf where the book was. And one certain part inside the book, she says, um, if Jesus is your saviour, then you have been appointed as a daughter of the King of Kings. You have an amazing crown, the crown of everlasting life. You wear the most important banner of all, the banner of his name. And you may be the only Jesus some people will ever see. Yes, you have a royal responsibility to honour your king by living for him. You have power inside of you, the king's very spirit, to do great things for the eternal kingdom. But what good is being a princess if we never assume our position of royalty in this life? I, and then she says, I believe if the Lord were going to personalise John fifteen sixteen in a love letter to you, his love note might read something like this. My princess, I chose you before the foundation of the earth to be my princess. You are royalty even though at times you don't feel like a princess. I will wait for you until you are ready to start living out the amazing plans that I have for you. I know that you don't know where to begin or how to live as a princess I've called you to be. So... Let me teach you day by day. Start by recognizing who I am, King of kings and Lord of lords and the lover of your soul. When the two of us begin to meet alone together every day, I will show you how to live as my chosen princess. But remember, my child, just as I have chosen you, I have given you a choice about whether or not you want to represent me to the world. If you are willing, I am here to give you all you need to fulfill that royal calling. Love from your king who has chosen you. Isn't that beautiful? And this book is full of just like, you know, like letters as if, you know, um, just letters like that. Um, so, so what this precious sister Sherry Rose Shepherd does is she basically gets the scriptures and she writes a letter as if it's a love letter from Jesus. And it's all got the scriptures in it. And it just really uplifts your spirit. And I tell you, I don't know what I was going through, the way the enemy was attacking me that day when I, when the Lord blessed me with this book. As I began to read, my spirit was instantly lifted up. It was just like Jesus speaking to me, to my heart. It was so beautiful. And um, so the scripture there was, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. John chapter 15, verse 16. Glory to God. So look at how beautiful Jesus is, how he cares for us, he blesses us, he gives us gifts. He's so precious. Um, and uh, on that same day, what happened is there was a, um, a young woman that came up to me. And uh, it's just all, yeah, like she, she, it was just amazing. She comes up to me and she goes, excuse me, do you remember me? And she, she says to me, I just want to say, I'm so very sorry. I've treated you so horribly in the past, but I ask that you will forgive me. Please forgive me. And I said, oh, of course I'll forgive you. And I hugged her and I said, I love you. I said, it's okay. I forgive you. And I wanted to minister to her, but she was in a rush. And I just thought that was so beautiful. So this woman has obviously mocked me in the past and, and ridiculed me. And, um, um, but she came up to me and she said, sorry. And she asked me to forgive her. And the very same day, what happened is... Um, I had to go back into that building. You know, I, in one of my recent videos, I shared about how um, this woman in the building that I was in, she came up to me and she told me that she doesn't want me to talk about Jesus while I'm in that uh, office building. Um, and then I shared how I walked out the door and the Lord had someone waiting there, a man called Jacob. He was waiting in the doorway and I led him to Christ. Power of God falls on him. Well, it happened again just on Wednesday just past, brothers and sisters. As I had to go into the building, um, 
there was an old man and a young man sitting directly outside the door of this building. And, um, and I was just so led by the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit, right? That he, he, he knew what was going to happen. And so I began to minister to this young man who would have been, you know, easily in his twenties. And the older man would have been, you know, a much older man. Um, and I began to minister to them. And the young man's name was Chris. And Chris was intently hearing what I had to say. Brothers and sisters, Chris received Jesus into his heart as Lord and Savior. Power of God fell on him in such a beautiful way. Such a humble young man. The Lord had him sitting there for a reason and the timing was just perfect. And this man was so touched. I gave him a word. I was sharing Jesus with him and he was he could not believe the presence of the Lord. After he had received Jesus into his heart and said the prayer, oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, there was a moment and, you know, many other street preachers that I speak to, they say that they witness the same thing. Sometimes you can see the instant when, when the Holy Spirit comes in, because the Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, behold, they are a new creation. The old has passed and new has come. You can instantly see the change in some people. I can't even describe to you what I saw in this man. It was like when the power of God fell on him and he received Jesus into his heart and I prayed for him and he opened his eyes and it was a sudden change in his face. The best way I can describe this precious young uh, young man was that the scene in um, uh, The Passion of the Christ where um, Peter chops off the ear of, of one of the men who've come to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And remember the scene where Jesus puts the ear back on the man and heals the man's ear? And the man literally sits there, blown away, in awe, staring at the Savior, and the others are telling him to get up, get up, you know, because they're, they're there to arrest Jesus. But this man realized, he had a defining moment at that point that, I have just met the Savior. He is who he says he is. This is God. This is Yahweh. And that moment he realized that his ear has been healed, and the look on his face is priceless. Well, this is the look on Chris's face was priceless. He was in such awe. It was so beautiful, such a powerful, genuine conversion. At that moment, a Asian man comes running up to me. He starts clapping. And he, he I think he was a born again Christian. And he raised his hands in the air. And he came up to me and he hugged me. He kissed me on the cheek. So I started to talk to him. I realized that he was happy with, you know, I was preaching on the street and I was praying for this one. But then he, he couldn't speak English. But then he started going, mm, mm. Ma, back, back, please, please pray. So I pray for the man's back. Instantly the power of God falls on this man. And he was like, oh. he could not believe it. He was like, oh, oh. like, he could not believe what had happened. The power of God fell on him. And he's bending, he's standing up, he's twisting, he's jumping up and down, jogging on the spot. He was like, oh. and he's clapping his hands, but he couldn't speak English. And he hugged me and, and he... And brothers and sisters, there was people coming out of the shops and they witnessed this. And as he began to walk away, I said to him, everybody, Jesus just healed him. You witnessed that. Jesus just healed that man. Glory to Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And I gave him the scripture. I was telling everyone, don't be surprised at what you, at what you are seeing. And I was encouraging everyone that Jesus is the healer. And he's, he, he heals people, he delivers them, he sets them free. And I said, it's a miracle because Jesus is a miracle worker. And I was pre preaching to everyone and loving on everyone. And you know what? Where did this happen? Again, right outside the building of the office where that woman made it clear she does not want me to bring Jesus in the building or to talk about Jesus. But God has the final say. So, uh, you know, just amazing how the Lord works. Um, you know, the enemy tries to stop you, but, you know, um, but, but God encourages you, no, don't stop. I've given you authority. Go, you know. Um, so it was such a beautiful day, you know. And then as I turned my attention to the old man and I, and I said, so what's your name? And he looked up at me and he says to me, I'm not interested. I said, oh, no, I didn't ask you if you're interested. I asked you what, what your name is. He goes, listen, I'm not interested in anything you're talking about, but Shortly after that, I began to preach and 
He didn't argue with me, he didn't fight. I began to preach to everyone in that area, but he just stood up and walked away. The seed was planted. You see, there were two men sitting there, an old man, a young man. One received it humbly, and the other one, full of pride, rejected the Son of God and walked away. He'll be without excuse on the day of judgment. Praise the Lord. Um, so, and there was another man, you know, I have a lot of, um, you know, one, one-on-one -on -one encounters. I speak to a lot of people every day. Um, obviously, I can't share every single conversation that I have with people because there just wouldn't be any room to share it. But every day, as I step out the door, um, the, the, that's just the ministry the Lord has given me, that the Holy Spirit will always prompt me to approach people, whether it's road workers, whether it's builders, whether it's someone on the bus, the train. It doesn't matter. Wherever we are standing, we are called to be a voice and a light. Hallelujah. Um, so, And then there was an older man who I had witnessed to, and um, this man's name was Arthur. Brothers and sisters, he looked like Father Abraham from the Bible. He had such long hair. Well, who knows? I, I mean, you know, the Bible says be sure to entertain strangers because some of them have, have entertained angels without realizing. But, um, oh, well, I, I'm pretty sure this man was, was not an angel because he, I began to minister to him. He had a walking frame. He was on the train. He was, a old, he was an old man. He would have easily been in his 70s or 80s, probably 80s, late 80s. And um, he had a long beard, and I was ministering to him, and he said, I asked Jesus to come in a long time ago, but I, I kicked him out. I said, why did you kick him out, sir? And he goes, because the minute I asked him to come in, all I got was pain. So much pain, so much problems arose in my life, and I thought it was him, so I told him to get it. I said, no, 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 no. I said, God is not the author of pain and problems. I said, you have to understand that when you invite Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, that's when the battle begins. Yes, you'll have pain and problems and struggles, but Jesus is there to help you, guide you, and lead you. I said, Jesus never ever promised us a struggle-free life, but at least if you have Jesus living in your heart, he's going to carry you through all the storms. And so I just encourage him, you know, I was witnessing to him. He said yes to Jesus. I pray with him. Power of God falls on him. He was so touched and he was so happy. And then um, I was with a brother in Christ. The brother in Christ um, was talking to someone else at that moment, and I just I, I tapped him on the shoulder, and I and I and we were just encouraging this man Arthur, and Arthur was saying, "I'm so excited. There's going to be a picnic in heaven. What a day when Jesus Christ comes back! It's going to be like a big picnic with all of our family, and we we're all talking about that day when the trumpet sounds. And it was such a joyful moment, brothers and sisters. But this man Arthur, literally at this age, like he received Jesus back into his heart, and I said, "Now don't kick him out, okay?" Don't tell Jesus to get out because if you tell him to get out, then he'll leave, you know. If you don't want Jesus, he'll go, you know. So he's a gentleman. I said, but trust in him, read the word of God, you know, meditate upon the word of God and, and spend time in relationship with him, your Savior. He loves you so much. Glory to God. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have time to read this scripture, but um, uh, let's see. I won't have time to read it. Um that scripture, brothers and sisters, will have to be for my next video. Um, I just wanted to encourage you with, um, let's see. I'll read a little bit of it. So Ephesians chapter 5, and I'll read from verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But, but, but fornification and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. I thought that was interesting scripture there because um, it just proves, it, you know, the one saved always saved lie. One saved always saved liars, pr false preachers. They say that you can be sealed, you can still be saved, and you can still fornicate. But the word of God says there... Fornication and all uncleanness, let it not be named among you as become a saints. It's speaking to the saints there. It's speaking, it's saying if you become a saint, let not be fornication amongst you. So that should refute that one save, those one save always save liars. Um, you're teaching a another, you're preaching another gospel because my heavenly father's word does not contradict itself. 
How can you be walking in cleanliness if you call yourself to be a born-again Christian, a saint, and you're still doing the things that they do in darkness? Okay? Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. How can you be a saint and be and still be living the life that you used to live before you came to Christ? It just contradicts itself. Completely contradicts itself. And I'm going to leave it there because my video is going to cut out. But um, if you're a once saved, always saved believer, God is using many of his watchmen and watchwomen to sound the trumpet and warning you to repent, turn from your sins. Um, repentance is not, repentance is a mandate from God, okay? It is not works, okay? The Bible doesn't say repentance is a works mentality. You are not saved by your works. Your works cannot save you. Salvation is a free gift from God. Jesus paid the price on the cross for your sins. But once you come to him, uh, as a born-again Christian, you receive his Holy Spirit, you can't go, it's like a dog returning back to its vomit. You know, some people want to have their cake and they want to eat it too. They want one foot with Jesus and one foot with the devil. Jesus said, if you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. How can you be a Christian on fire, living for Jesus, but still be fornicating, still be committing adultery, still be stealing, still be doing things that are sinful in God's eyes? It's time to repent. Turn from your sins today. Listen to God's word because God's word is holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. But many people don't want God's word. They want their itching ears to be tickled. They want to listen to false preachers who are damning them to hell. They'll be without excuse on that day. Brothers and sisters, without further ado, I love you all so much. And I'll see you all in my next video. Repent, 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 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You will not be able to say that you were not well, you, you will not be able to say that you were not warned. Listen to God's word, because God's word is truth and life. Hallelujah. Bye bye, brothers and sisters.